Hey everyone, this is Michael McTagg from Fujikawa Kokan in Osaka, Japan. Lately, I've been wondering what I can do to be more engaged with the work that we're performing and how to organize my thoughts around some of the concepts and reasonings behind the maintenance executed on the trees here. So I've decided I'm going to start a bi-weekly or monthly video post sharing with you the work that we're doing and my personal thoughts about each task as they're presented. But it's not really about me, it's about the trees. So let's show you a few things that happened at Kokaen this April. I recently wired this Chinese quince back in January and now it's time to go in and do some spring pruning. So we're taking any shoots that have extended and cutting them back to two or three leaves depending on the direction. Now you have to be careful here because the flower leaves do not have a bud. So you have to make sure you're just checking each leaf as you go and counting outwards from the first leaf that has a bud along the shoot. Now one other little important detail here is to make sure you're cutting to a leaf that is either facing down or lateral, ideally not towards the inside of the tree. You want it to be going outwards so that you develop nicer ramification and you'll require less intervention with wire or other adjustments in the future. We'll repeat this process several more times throughout the growing season and defoliate the tree entirely in summer which should activate any latent buds and give us finer ramification as well as keep the interior growth nice and strong. Up next is a Suisho white pine. On the bottom right and the top of the tree you can see that it's missing a bunch of needles. Now we took these off on purpose because it's actually contracted some kind of needle blight so we need to remove the infected needles to prevent it from spreading further. You can see that all the buds are still swelling with maybe only a couple of imbalances but we'll spray this tree a couple of times in June when the blight becomes active again and hopefully the problem goes away. Here's what your buds should look like right now if your tree is nice and healthy. I'll give you a quick look at another interesting variety here which is this Fugumusume Goyomatsu. It's very similar to that of Zuisho or Kokonoe with short dark needles. Another problem we're taking care of are these cotton aphids which are infecting some of our black pines. They like to hide in the crevices underneath branches and in the crotches of branches as well and along the trunk line. So you really have to be diligent when you're looking for these and if they do get too bad you may have to scrape them off with a wire brush and then spray the tree. So up next we start attending to the partial defoliation of all the Japanese maples in the garden. You can see that this one has some leaf spot on it. That's due to the fact that we had to spray this in early spring to fight off some aphids before the leaves had hardened off properly. So it's just one of those things where you have to pick your battles. The aphids could have done a lot more damage if we didn't get rid of them. But as you can see it's still nice and healthy. And for comparison here's two other momiji that are in the garden. The leaves are nice and bright healthy and uniform throughout. Back into the workshop, we're gonna begin partial defoliation on this tree. So what we do is we take one leaf from every pair at the branch tip and we cut it off. And then we take the remaining leaf and cut it in half. You can cut it flat in half if you'd like, but we take it and fold the leaf by hand in half and then cut flat there. So you end up kind of preserving the shape of the leaf. You can choose how you'd like to do it as you'll achieve the same result. It's just a matter of how you'd like to enjoy your tree throughout the growing season. In addition, not only to preserve the in-leaf appearance of the tree, but to actually let more light into the interior, you want to cut any leaves that are appearing upwards out of the shoot and you want to leave the leaf that's pointing downwards. This is a really small detail that can make a really big difference when done over the entirety of the tree. To save time, one thing that I like to do is go over an entire branch section and cut all the tips to one leaf and then I'll go back and cut all the others in half. And that way you can really tell which ones you actually need to cut to let light in there. This way you can quickly judge which leaves need to be cut to create a nice alternating pattern and ensure there's even light exposure for each one. To make sure that no leaves are overlapping too tightly which could cause moisture buildup or a good hiding place for insects. From what I've gathered this partial defoliation work is important for several reasons. Firstly, we're trying to maintain the interior growth of the tree if you don't do this, the interior is going to quickly get shaded out and the leaves on the inside will drop and the buds will likely die. 
Deciduous bonsai in particular are maintained by using this interior growth over time and cutting back to it when it's necessary. Therefore, preserving it should be a priority. Secondly, we can use this as a tool to balance vigor around the tree, where if you have areas that are too strong, you can cut the leaves a bit smaller. And conversely, not cutting areas that are either too weak or too shaded out by the above canopy, allowing them to regain some strength. Lastly, this work allows us to maintain fine branching. By removing the extra foliage mass, we're able to convince the tree that it needs less resources, and therefore the vascular layers within the branches will only develop for as much as they need to provide for. It's really simple math. By removing 75% of the foliage mass from the outside of the tree, you're increasing light to the interior by the same amount. So let's take a look up inside there. The next morning we ran around and put fertilizer on all the trees. We had our newest apprentice put them into tea bags this year, which should keep the sparrows at bay and also help with the fermentation process of the fertilizer. It also made distributing them very quick. And here's a look at a couple of my trees after throwing fertilizer on them. So moving on to some of my favorite work and what I consider the most relaxing job in the season. This is the spring pruning of our ume. Going into the close-up here, let's show you just how we do this at Koken. We're going to take any shoots that have extended and we're going to look for the susuba or the cuff leaves. These are down at the bottom of where the shoot first emerges. And you can pull these by hand. If they're a little hard, you can cut them. Um, we typically just pull these on the trees that are really dense. Uh, otherwise, they're going to fall off on their own a little later into spring. These leaves don't have buds, so at this point they're fairly useless to the tree and if anything, cause more problems by limiting light and airflow to the interior. From there we're going to count three leaves down the stem and we're going to cut at that point. You're probably wondering why three leaves? Well, there's a couple reasons behind this. Until about earlier midsummer, the tree hasn't decided whether or not those new buds are going to be flower buds or leaf buds, and it can only be one or the other. If we do this work too late, then the buds on the inside of the shoot will become flower buds, and the ones on the outside extended portions of the shoots will become leaf buds. And on a tree this old, we can't afford to be sacrificing branches like that. However, if we do this now, we have about a 50% chance per bud remaining on the branch to be a flower bud or leaf bud which all but guarantees us two leaf buds, which will continue fine ramified growth on the tree. On our younger tree, you can expect this type of work to send some energy back into the interior and provide you with some new buds to work off of. However, on this old tree with such old craggy branches, we really don't see too much of that. And all we can really expect of it is to produce more flower buds and give us a nicer show each February. And a very important thing not to overlook here, you can see we have this area on the tree which was infested with aphids. They've since gone, but all the leaves have curled up. So we're going to get in here and pull out all of the susuba to help get some airflow in there. If we don't do this, we may be creating an environment where moisture could get built up and fungus could grow. And taking this already weak area of this tree to become even weaker, we may end up losing these branches. But we won't take more than we need to and we'll just get it cleaned up so that the leaves that are in good shape in there can do their job. So now we can see through the branch here a bit, which means air is going to be able to get in and around there as well. We'll finish this work with another inspection underneath the branches to remove any scale insects which still remain on the tree. This is a constant fight that starts before the leaves even flush out of the tree and goes until about mid-May to try and manage these insects. Just a warning, this part is kind of gross, but I think it's important to know this for dealing with these bugs. And the ones in question are these small, red, dark, and round insects. I believe that they belong to the Cocoidea family, and the thing about them is that they are a soft-skinned insect that is protected by this waxy coating that's built up the longer that they're on the tree. The troubling thing about them is that because of this waxy coating on the outside of them, typical insecticides won't eliminate them. And to add to the problem, their little mouths only protrude into the phloem of the branch, so systemic insecticides won't work either. So in order to keep them from denying nutrients to the rest of the tree, we have to get in here with a toothpick or a brush and take them off by hand manually. Which is a difficult and time-consuming task because they like to hide underneath branches as well as in the crotches. We're continually checking all of our ume throughout the spring season to ensure that they're free of these pests. 
We'll move on to a quick overview of the Hibai or Scarlet Flowered Ume. The leaves on this variety are a little bit finer, but the work remains the same. We'll remove the susuba, prune back to three leaves on any extended branches, and we won't touch any weak or low parts of the tree. Here's a look at those same two trees back in February when the flowers are in full bloom. And as I mentioned earlier about the susuba falling off on their own, Here's a look at late April as they're beginning to yellow and start to fall. That being said, I still do recommend removing them on trees that are particularly dense or not so airy. The last piece I'd like to share is how we manage the strength on this almost 100 year old momiji. When maples get this old, the most important thing is to manage its strength in the very weakest areas. But the difficult thing with that is that the tree as a whole is not so vigorous anymore. So in early spring, metsumi, or bud pinching, is done just a little bit later, and then about a month after that we'll go back in for some partial defoliation of only selected areas. This time, instead of taking the entire canopy and cutting one leaf and one in half off of each branch tip pair, we'll go through the healthiest or most dense sections of the tree and cut one leaf from each pair in those areas only. What we can hope to achieve by this is to mitigate the loss of the weakest areas on the tree so that this can be enjoyed as a bonsai in its final years. For me, bonsai is a study of cycles, as well as a practice in patience and understanding impermanence, learning to both deal with and accept change, as well as becoming adaptable to the unforeseen. With bonsai we closely manage the environment our trees exist within, and yet there seems to be no shortage of surprises along the way. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch my video today. Moving forward, I'll be doing my best to try and keep these videos on a single subject, and maybe do seasonal overviews every once in a while. Given the nature of my apprenticeship, I won't be letting the videos take priority over the work we're doing, so I apologize in advance for any funny camera angles or missing content that might have otherwise been valuable. But I've changed my outlook from only trying to show nice trees at Kokaen to looking for opportunities that provide teachable moments where I can share information that I find valuable to the practice of bonsai. If you like what you've seen, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like or a share, but if you didn't like it, that's okay too. If you have any feedback or suggestions or things that you'd like to see in the future, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'm Michael McTagg and more of my work can be found at bonsaiharmony.ca or at bonsaiharmony on all socials. Thanks again and be safe out there.